Hello, this is Mrs. Allen, and I'm gonna read a story for you today called Boxes for Cot J by Candace Fleming and pictures by Stacy Dresden McQueen. This is a book um, I bought for my daughter a number of years ago, and we both, it's one of our favorites for both of us. And it's about a little girl in Indiana and a little girl in Holland right after World War II. And it was a really difficult time in history for these people. And um, it's just really um, a lovely story. So boxes for Katja. And here's Mayfield, Mayfield, Indiana, May 1945. And this is what the little town looks like where the one girl lives. Boxes for Katje. And here's a little girl and she has a box for Katje and she's walking over to mail it. After the war, there was little left in the tiny Dutch town of Olst. The townspeople lived on cabbages and seed potatoes they patched and repatched their worn thin clothing and they went without soap or milk or sugar or new shoes. One spring morning, when the tulips bloomed thick and bright, postman Klein Hunte pedaled his bike down the cobbled street. Oh ho, he whooped, I have a box for Katje, a box from America. America, exclaimed Katje. Who would send me a box from America? The Children's Aid Society, replied the postman. Children in America are collecting and mailing many hard to find items to the children of Holland. You young miss were lucky to get one. Katje took the box. She rubbed her finger across the block letters that spelled USA. The land of plenty, she whispered. Katje's mama came to stand beside her. Open it, she urged. Peeling off the brown paper wrapping, Katje pushed back the flaps and pulled out a cake of soap. What luxury, said Mama. No more bathing with gritty homemade stuff for you. Katje pulled out the next item. A pair of wool socks. Now that is luxury, said Postman Klein Hunte. Holland has become a sockless country since the war. He rolled up his pant leg to show his bare ankle. Katje dipped into the box again and out came <gasps> chocolate. Mama sniffled and then sighed. I have not smelled chocolate in years. Postman Klein Hunte smacked his lips. I have not tasted chocolate in years. Neither have I, said Katje. Her mouth watered as she remembered its creamy, rich sweetness. She could hardly wait to take a bite. And then she looked from Mama's smiling face to Postman Klein Hunte's and Katje made a decision. Quick, before she could change her mind, she broke the bar into pieces and passed them around. For several moments, the three savored the almost forgotten taste. Then Postman Klein Hunte pointed. That box is not empty yet. Katje reached in and pulled out a letter. And this is what it read. Dear Dutch friend, I hope these gifts brighten your day. Your American friend, Rosie Johnson from Mayfield, Indiana, USA. The postman nodded. Ja, Rosie's box brightened my day. And mine, agreed Mama. I'm going to tell her, decided Katje. I'm going to send a letter to Rosie. And here is her letter. Dear American friend, thank you for the soap and the socks, but most of all for the chocolate. Sugar is not found in Holland these days, so anything sweet is precious. My mother and postman Klein Hunte very much enjoyed it too. Your Dutch friend, Katje. Weeks passed and summer came, hot and bright. The townspeople of Olst boiled cabbages, dug potatoes, and dreamed of meat and bread. 
One morning, while Katja and her mama pulled up their tulips, rubbed the stems, and sorted the bulbs into bags, Postman Klein Hunte came pedaling down the street. She has another one, he hollered. Katje has another box from America. His shouts drew Mr. and Mrs. DeLand and their five thin children from next door. Everyone gathered around as Katje eagerly opened the second bigger box. Johan, look, shrieked Mrs. DeLand when the flaps were pulled back. I am looking, gulped her husband, but I am not believing my eyes. From the box, Katje pulled four bags of sugar and a letter from Rosie. Dear Katje, no sugar? Yikes, that's so awful. Mother and I are sending you some. We included some for your postman too. Your friend, Rosie. Sugar, 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 sang Postman Klein Hunte, grabbing the smallest to land. He danced with the toddler to the words sweet beat. And Katje made a decision. There is plenty to share, she said. Ah, sobbed Mrs. DeLand, dabbing her eyes with the corner of her apron. You are too kind. Thank you, Katje. Thank you. Then, as Postman Klein Hunte sang, the children danced, and Mrs. DeLand sniffled. Katje divided the sugar. Later, she wrote to Rosie. Dear friend Rosie, so many sweets. How can I ever thank you? I shared the sugar with our neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. DeLand. They have five children who are skin and bone. With so little food in Holland, it is hard to keep anyone fed. Your gift has surely helped us. Your friend, Katje. Weeks passed and autumn came, rainy and gray. The townspeople of Olst picked the last of their cabbages and potatoes. They lined their old coats with newspaper to keep out the cold air and they worried about the coming winter. How will we survive without good food or warm clothing? They asked each other. How will we live? Katje and her mama worried too, but as always, they planted their tulip bulbs in the hardening ground and looked forward to the day the tulips would bloom. They were brushing dirt from their knees when Postman Klein Hunte came stumbling down the street it's a big one, he shouted, so big I could not bring it on my bicycle ball. Ja, ja, a big, heavy box from America. His excited shouts drew Dr. Bose from his office and the widow Gans from her yard. They drew Miss Oosterveld and schoolmaster De Liu and all seven of the Delands. Everyone crowded around as Katje dug into this third, bigger box from America. Wunderbar, shouted Dr. Bose when he looked in the box. Such generosity! There were cans of meat, boxes of powdered milk, bags of sugar, and a letter from Rosie. Dear Katje, jeepers, you'll never guess. Mother told her friends about your last letter, and they told their friends, and our doorbell just kept ringing. Send this to Katje, people kept saying. So we did. Hope this puts some fat on those DeLand kids. Love, Rosie. Oh, it will, it will, cried Mrs. DeLand. And Katje made another decision. There is plenty to share, she said. Bless you, cried Miss Oosterveld. Amid kisses and hugs and heartfelt thankus, Katje divided the food. And later, she wrote to Rosie. Dear Rosie, your box caused much excitement in Olst. Almost everyone came to see what you and your kind townspeople had sent, and everyone left with a share of your gifts. For a small time, it was like a party here. People stopped worrying about the holes in their shoes and their threadbare coats. They did not think of the long, cold winter ahead. You see, your friendship has not only filled our stomachs, it has lifted our spirits as well. Love, Katje. Weeks passed and winter roared in, snow deep and bitter cold. It was the worst winter anyone could remember. The townspeople of Olst layered whatever clothing they had. They huddled close to their small fires 
ate sparingly from their almost empty cupboards. They shivered and prayed. One dark morning, when Katje felt as frozen as the tulip bulbs buried beneath the snow, there came a pounding on her door. She opened it to find Postman Klein Hunte and the townspeople crowded into the yard. What a delivery I have for you, whooped the postman. He pulled a sled, stacked high with boxes, straight into the house. So many, gasped Katje. Ach, but there are more, cried the postman. Squeezing his way through the crowd, he returned with another box stacked sled and another and still another. There was barely room for boxes and people as Katje pushed back flaps and pulled out coats, mittens, socks and shoes, scarves, hats and sweaters. Cakes of soap, chocolate bars and bags, cartons and cans of food. At the bottom of the very last box, there was a letter from Rosie. Dear Katje, you won't believe what's happening here. Everyone everywhere wants to send a box to you. The school organized a canned food drive. The church organized a clothes drive. Even the local businesses added items to the boxes. We hope there's enough here for all your friends and neighbors. Love, Rosie. For several seconds, the townspeople of Olst stood in speechless wonder. Then Katje cried, there is plenty to share. Hooray, Postman Klein Hunte danced a jig in his new wool socks. Mrs. Deland wept while buttoning five warm coats and Dr. Bose put down his cans to give the widow Gans a quick joy-filled kiss. Mama wrapped her arms around Katje. You have brought us a miracle, she said. No, replied Katje, Rosie did. All winter long, the boxes kept coming. All winter long, the townspeople stayed warm and well-fed. And all winter long, Katje wrote letters to her American friend, Rosie. Slowly, the snow melted and the wind lost its, lost its bite. Each day, more and more tulips poked their green tips through the soil, blooming into a sea of pink and yellow, purple and red. One warm morning, Katje said, it would be nice to send a box to Rosie. Ja, said Mama, but what would you send? Katje smiled as she told her. It's a good idea, said Mama. Ho, oh, ho, oh, I like it, agreed Postman Klein Hunte. We must do it, said the Delands. Together, added Dr. Bose. And so, one sunbright morning, Mr. Everett, the mailman, hurried down Elm Street I have a box for Rosie, he announced. A box from Holland. Holland, exclaimed Rosie. What could it be? Eagerly, she ripped off the wrapping and pulled back the flaps. So many, gasped her mother. And then Rosie read the letter. Dear Rosie, we hope these tulip bulbs from Olst will brighten Mayfield's days. Plant them in the fall and wait for a surprise in the spring. Love, Katje. And so here's pictures of the bulbs. And then as they grow and turn into tulips. And then here is Mayfield, Indiana, two years later. So if you looked at the beginning, here it was without the tulips. And then here it is at the end with the tulips. And what a beautiful story of friendship. And this is actually based on a true story. Um, and the woman who wrote this, her mother had um, written notes to a, a girl in Holland. And so this is based on a true story. So I hope you're inspired. And I always get goosebumps in this one. So have a great day.